everybody, and welcome to episode 52 of Nickel O's World Podcast. Welcome, welcome. If this is your first time for joining me, thank you so much. If you're a returning viewer, as always, thank you so much for coming back another week. How is everybody? I hope you guys have had a great week. My week's been great. Although, looking at my calendar, it feels like it's been longer than a week since I podcasted with you guys. It feels like, I don't know why. It feels longer than that. In case you're wondering, today is Sunday, January the 18th, 2015, and it's about like 4.15 in the evening here, and gray skies, icy, bitter cold here, in case you're wondering, I live in Pennsylvania, in case you know and you do not know that. Alright, this is episode 52, you guys. And in case you're wondering who I am, if I haven't said it already, I am your host, Nicole, also known as N- Nikki, 18229. All right, we've got some good stuff going on. Let's get started here. We got some Ministrati, finished objects, works in progress, and stash enhancements. All right. It's not really administrati, but I wanted to put it out there. Oh, before I forget, grab your favorite beverage of choice. Choice, I can't talk. I think I'm going to call this, I don't know how to talk episode. Grab your favorite beverage of choice. Today, I am drinking some Diet Berry Iced Tea. All right. I wanted to put it out there, you guys. I went to Joanne's. And I went to AC Moore. I went to those two stores. And I was looking for um, Red Heart Heart and Soul Sock Yarn. And for um, Lion Brand Socky Sock Yarn. Hang on. I got to fix my chair. You guys, hang on. All right. That feels better. I felt like wobbly. All right. I don't know why. But anyways, I was looking for like I was looking for those two sock yarns. Lion brand Saki sock yarn, one bought one skein, one skein makes a pair of socks. Well, I went to Joanne's and I mentioned it before in other podcasts. Like I, I said I couldn't find it here. I seen that they changed the ball band label. I went to Joanne's and I'm looking and I'm looking. I see Premier, Deborah Norville, Patton's Croy, and I'm like where are the other sock yarns? So I asked, I said to the woman, I said, I, it was somebody walking by and I said, you know, can you help me? And I said, look for this. She said, I really don't know. It's not my department. You know, speak with somebody at the cutting station where they cut the fabric. So I did that. And the, the girl came down and she's like, let me check. And she said, oh, I'm sorry. We discontinued. The Red Heart, Heart and Soul, and Lime Brand Sockies. What you see on the shelf there is what we carry anymore. I go, oh. I go, this is new. You've always carried. She goes, we don't carry those now. And I said, oh. I said, okay, thank you. Have a good day. And I bought a few things there, and I left. I was disappointed. So then this weekend, because you may be watching this during the week, so that's why I'm I'm saying this weekend, I stopped at, well, last week, last weekend, I stopped, which would have been the weekend of January the 10th and 11th, I stopped at AC Moore on Airport Road, that's in Allenhelm, Pennsylvania, and I didn't see, the only sock yarn I saw there was Patton's Croy. And I didn't care for the colors, and I'm like, eh. So then this weekend, I stopped at AC Moore on McCarthy Road in Whitehall, Allentown. And I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm like, okay, I see Patton's Croy, and I believe it was another, no. I don't think it was another sock yarn there. I think the only sock yarn I saw there was Patton's Cry. Yeah. 
I could be telling you a lie on that. There could have been another stockyard in there that I didn't know about. <laughs> but the only one I saw was pa the only one I think I remember seeing was Patton's Croy. So I asked a sales associate, I said, excuse me, I said, do you all carry Red Heart, Heart and Soul sock yarn and Lion Brand Saki sock yarn? No. I said, when did you do that? Oh, when we remodeled the store, like, remodeled as in, I don't know if you've ever gone into an AC more now, but they've changed the layout of AC, of the one AC more. And I don't know if I like the way they have the yarn section. I mean, I like that it's all in one area. But I was disappointed that I can no longer get those two sock yarns at those two stores. I don't know if Michaels carries them. I have yet to check Michaels. But I do know because... My other thing was they came home and I Googled, or as I've heard people say, I gurgled it. And I wanted to make sure that Red Heart was still continuing with Red Heart Heart and Soul. And that Lion Brand was continuing with Saki Sock Yarn. That that wasn't like something they were discontinuing. Because if those two companies were, don't you know I'd be buying all kinds of that yarn in D-Stash. So... Check them both what check them both websites. They're both very much in production and very much being sold. So if I want them, I have to buy them over the internet. Which okay, fine, that's no big deal. I don't mind buying. You know, like it's e ease of shopping online. You know, it's easier. But I also get kind of like a kid in the candy store, like oh, sock yarn. I think we get sock yarn. That's why I don't like Patton's Quarry. I do like Patton's Quarry, don't get me wrong. But I get excited with the, I, I don't, I'm like a little kid with those two. Because they have the fun, funky colors at times. Okay, I spent like seven minutes rambling about that. So, moving on in announcements. We have a Facebook page, in case you're new and don't know about it, Nickel O's World Podcast. Search it on Facebook. We also have a blog, nickelosworldpodcast.blogspot.com. And we also have a raft group, Nickelos World Podcast. All right, we also have a cow cow going on, which is our year long blanket along. Our blanket year long, or I think that's how I have it. Or I may have blank, year long blanket along. Anyhow, there's a thread on raft for it, and it's simple. I started this January the 9th, and I'm kind of, it says it ends December the 31st, 2015, but I'm actually going to go back and do some editing, and let me write it down here, because to make it a full year, I am going to end it on January the 9th, 2016, because then that will be one full calendar year that we have done it. And we will also, in case you're wondering, we will also have other alongs going on in the group throughout the year as well. But the blanket along, it's just a year-long thing for all of us to get our blankets off our hooks and needles and encourage each other. Rules are simple. I do not care when you start at your blanket. You could have had your blanket on your hook or needles for a year, six months, a month, two years. I don't care when you started it. Just as long as you finish it by January the 9th, 2016. I don't care if it's a Lapgan, Afghan, um, baby blanket, dog blanket, um, a blanket for your bed. I don't care what kind of blanket it is, it counts. And you can post pictures in the thread. Chatter is welcome and encouragement is welcome in the thread. And... Of course, post your finished objects, guys. I haven't, actually, because I've been busy with work stuff, I haven't been able to touch my blanket. I had magic cakes caked up, but I have not been able to give my blanket love. Bad me. Bad podcaster. 
<laughs> but anyhow, I'm going to try to work on it tonight. Also, I want to wish everybody that has had or will have a birthday in January a very happy birthday. I hope you have a wonderful day and you at least get something that you ask for one for your birthday. All right, that is that. Moving on. Finished objects. I have three. And I can finally show my finished object that has been staying in my bag since December. But I'm going to tease you guys a little longer because I want to show you one of my finished objects as I reach over here. I don't have the physical finished object. I gave it to the person that I made it for. They asked me to make them baby booties. And I was also, I said to use some of the yarn, I said, you may or may not get a hat with it. But I gave her a hat with it. So, the hat that I finished is called Swirl Hat. And it is by Sheepy Time. The designer is... Mandy Harrington. It is a free wrap pattern. Here's what it looks like, the hat. And it goes in sizes from preemie to adult. I opted, I asked some of my friends because I thought of doing the new, newborn size, which is 13 to 14 inches. I was like, should I do the newborn size and then the 4 or 4 to 12 months with 4 to 12 munch. Yeah, munch. Uh-huh. I don't know how to talk today. <laughs> 4 to 12 months, which is 14 to 16 inches. I was leaning towards that, but I asked some of my friends that have children, and I said, would you think, I could, should I make a newborn or 4 to 6 months? And they all said, Nicole, make the 4 to 6 months because they do not stay in newborn clothes long. My one friend said, my son was only in him a week, and I had to put the bigger clothes on him. And everybody answered me back saying, make the 4 to 12 months. The baby will have lots of time to wear the hat. You know, even up where you're at in Pennsylvania, Nicole, you know, even in early spring, early the mid to late spring, you could still put a hat on a baby. And they're absolutely right. So I did that. Let me get my phone so I can show you guys the picture. And it really is a super quick knit. I started the hat. And it's in my finished project. If you want to look at it, it's called Solid Swirl Hat. I started it January 12th and finished it January 13th. Here is what the hat looks like. Isn't it cute? And I did those on three mils on circular needle. The other pattern I made happens to be crochet, and you can find that on my project page as well. I have two different project page for them, but the one that, the, the current one is called Baby Sneakers Crochet. And... It is a free wrap pattern. The actual pattern is called Crochet, Crocheted Baby Sneaker Booties by Sue Norad. And I use a 4.5 mil hook in Burnett Solid and Red Heart Super Saver White. And I have a picture of them. Hang on. Here they are. I think they are so cute through my go to baby booties because everybody that I've ever made for them absolutely loves them. They're like, oh, Nicole, I've never seen baby booty sneakers before. They're so cute. So here's what they look like. Aren't they so super cute? I stuffed them with paper. And I even told her I got, I stuffed it with paper for you, you know. And the person that I gave them to that she's going to gift them to, they love. She loves the pattern, and I know the person who she's giving it to will love the pattern. All right, my next pattern, and I don't have my project page for it yet, but I want to say I absolutely love this crochet project. 
And I want to tell Talia, thank you so much. I absolutely enjoy test crocheting for you. And I absolutely love, I just love it. It's so much fun. I love doing the project. And you, you wonderful designer. And if you're wondering who I'm talking about, I'm talking about um, Talia from Pen Hook Needles Podcast. If you don't follow them, you should. I absolutely love them. And Talia just recently got into designing, and she does, she's, not recently, she has other designs out there, but recently she's been doing a lot of toy designs, and I've done two of them, which is Barry the Cardinal and Selena the Cat, and now I want to introduce to the family my newest project, and I've had this finish, and I know I'm teasing you guys. I've had it finished for a quite a while now since December. And if you follow if you've been watching me and I've been teasing you, hang on, guys. Sorry about that. Um yeah, I've had this done for a while and I know I've kind of been teasing you guys, but I want to introduce you to the newest member of Franciscan Gypsy Designs that I have test crocheted for Talia. I want you guys, and you guys should seriously go by the patterns. They're super easy, they're so much fun, and they're quick little crochet. And they make great gifts for anybody. And now, without further ado, I want you guys to meet Coco the Bunny. Isn't she the cutest? Meet Coco. Isn't she just adorable? Now, you guys, I know some of you are probably saying, her nose is crooked. I am not the greatest at sewing on, like, little nose and mouse yet. I am not that good at it. I, prior to this year, I've never really done that. I'm sorry, prior to last year, 20, yeah, 2014, I've never really done that. So, I thoroughly enjoy it when I get a chance to practice. As you can see, I gave... My Coco has dark blue eyes, and you're probably thinking, I, I call her Coco for several reasons. One, because I decided to make her in brown. Excuse me, I'm sorry for the this, this sniffing and the this, this snuffing and kind of sounding like a little piggy, but since the weather turned bitter cold and we've had all kinds of snowstorms here lately, my allergies have flared up again, and my nose is just like, run, 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 run. So if I'm sniffing, please forgive me. I'm not trying to be rude or ill-mannered, but this is Coco. I named her not just because she's brown, but she reminds me, or the yarn, I should say, reminds me of my favorite perfume, which is by Chanel. I love Chanel Number no. 5 and Coco Chanel, Mademoiselle. I love all the Chanel perfume so that was another reason no she doesn't smell like it but she does smell good so this is Coco I have to take a picture I have to post my pictures for you guys so it won't be in this podcast but in the next podcast you'll see pictures of Coco I think she's so cute as you can see she can sit like this laying or I can prop her up she has your little white cotton tail, and you can always make it whatever color you want. I wonder, I have to check, I wonder if anybody made a cocoa in a variegated yarn. But that would look pretty. But this is cocoa, you guys. I've had her done for quite a while. All right, those are all my finished objects, you guys. So, we're going to move on to works in progress. The only thing that I've really been working on, you guys, to show you is a sweater I started. You guys remember I said I was working on the ice cardigan? Yeah, I frogged that. It was my own fault. I went down a, I went down one size, bus size, and the body was too small. Nobody but myself. That was the third time working on that pattern. So I said, you know what? I frogged it. I'm like, I'm putting it in timeout, and I'm trying something else. I'll come back to it with fresh eyes. 
And Marisha, don't be afraid to frog anything. It is literally so freeing and liberating to frog a project at times. I felt not bad at all on doing the little not 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 but like the end and ripping it out. It felt good. It felt good. And on my project page, you will see next to it, I frogged it. Yay! Okay. Anyways, current project. And I want to thank those of you on Instagram that I put a call out for help because I was confused with it. I have figured out what the problems that I was having. However, I may be contacting you guys again to look at it because sometimes an extra set of eyes is better than one. But here it is. It's called February Lady Sweater. And does it say who it's by on here? No, it does not. So let me get all the specs up project page and there's no picture but it is at my project page called February Lady Sweater and it's by Pamela W-Y-N-N-E. It is a free pattern on wrap. It was published in Flint Knits Knitter's Almanac 2010 and it was published in May of 2008. So far 13,326 people have made this sweater. So, it's safe to say it's a popular pattern. But here it is. The Bury Lady sweater. It is pretty. It is kind of like a raglan top down, but it has a yoke. I'm not giving anything away by saying it. It uses US 8 5 mil and US 6... I'm sorry, US 10... Six minutes. Now, Nicole's going to tell you something that she did wrong from the get-go. I was glancing over the directions, and it's my own fault because I didn't fully read it. I cast it on with my US 10 6 mils, and I was supposed to use my US 8 5 mils. However, I am that far along on it. I'm not frogging it. Um, another thing that I kind of... The pattern's okay. It's written okay, but not as good as I like. She does give some help. Like, I got... She does give information. There is on the project page, if you go to it, there's a little section called Wiki Page. And that gives you further more information, which is really good. I really love that they have that. Um, in the one part of the pattern for the eyelid increases, I didn't want to do the yarn overs. I'll show you guys what it looks like quick. Sorry, I'm bumping my computer. But I am sectioned off of the sleeves. I started this on January 7th. Am I showing you guys the right side or the wrong side to this puppy? I'm showing it to you that way. It's the wrong way. I got my yarn tangled in my stitch markers. Nanner, nanner, nanner. Let's fix it. I really got them tangled. And it's my own fault. Nobody else's. But the owner. Alright. Here we go. Here's the right way. You can't really see much not yet. It still looks like a blob. But you can see how it's looking. Now, I was kind of worried because I have the, where you button it, the buttonholes on the right side versus the left side. I made that boo-boo. But I think I more so did it because I'm a lefty, like... Most people would think because I'm a lefty, I'd want the buttonholes over here. But I think because the fact that I'm a lefty, I like that I can slide the buttonholes, the buttons through. Let me turn it around. You guys can see the, the pattern a little bit on the back. I'm not real far on the pattern. But that's how it's looking. And the yarn... My lighting is really bad tonight. The yarn I'm using is my Red Heart Super Saver in the turquoise colorway. 
I am using my 6 mil Higher Higher Sharps, and as I was saying, I don't know if I can slide this on with my sweater. It may be too bulky, but, or maybe not. But you guys will see, it calls for like, oh, you can see the pattern now. But it calls for um, the eyelets, and the way the eyelets would have fell, it would have fell across here. Well, I didn't like that. I didn't like because I'd have like these little air holes going, doo -doo 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 -doo. and the way the one would have fell would not have been flattering. And I think most of you know where I am going on this, but this is what it looks like so far. It would not have been flattering being a bus, being a big girl. It would have stuck out in that one area on my bust, and it would not have looked nice. So, I was reading the pattern, I was reading the wiki page, and some people said that they did make ones instead of yarn overs, and I modified that and did the make ones versus the yarn over, because like I said, it would not have looked very flattering on me where the holes would have fell. And the other thing I did, the other thing I found very helpful when I was trying to increase, because it calls obviously for increases to a certain degree, I, it said like increase 41, it said yarn over, it said work 41 yarn overs evenly. Well, that would be like 41 make, 41 make ones evenly. And I was like, how, you know, I wanted to make sure that I had it. It was like, how do I get it even? So I found this website, and I printed the page out just for my own reference so I knew how many times to repeat it. It's called How to Increase Stitches Evenly on a Row. It computer generates it. You tell it, like, I put, I had 283 stitches on my needle. I needed to increase 41 times. It gave me a total that I'll have to be 124 stitches when I'm done. However, I only came out to 320 and the reason being is because of the sleeves so it told me how many times like how many times I should make one like how many repeats of each section I should do it this is this if you're ever stuck on how many times to evenly do something read it it gives like if you want to do make ones instead of yarn overs it tells you, like, unbalanced, how many times to do it, how many times if you're doing it balanced. It's really helpful. I recommend it. So, so far, it's going good. The actual, like, lace pattern that is being used on there is called GULL, G-U-L-L, -L, lace pattern. And it's a very easy to memorize lace pattern. Um... I haven't really worked on any of my other finished, yeah, yeah, I guess I wouldn't work on any finished projects, would I? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, for goodness. I have not worked on any more works in progress. So, I am going to show you my enhancements. So, I'm going to pause because I see one I forgot. So, hang on. And I'm back. All right. Now, first of all, I want you guys to realize everything I'm going to show you is between, sorry, what I got last weekend and what I got this weekend and what I got in the mail on Saturday. I don't want you guys thinking like, oh, my God, she went on a massive yarn spree. <gasps> like, this girl, this lady is crazy. She went on a huge spree. No, I didn't. And I think I got everything. So I think I'm missing something. Hang on. Hang on one All more right, time. I have everything. First one is I need buttons for my February lady sweater. It has to be buttons. And last weekend I was at Joanne's and I was looking at the buttons. And I was trying to figure out what buttons would look nice with the sweater. I wasn't enthused with what buttons they have. Um, the pattern, the project page calls for um, 
three seven seven eight inch buttons. Three seven eight inch buttons. As you can see, I'm not giving anything away by showing it because it's free. Well, to me, those are kind of big. And in the pattern, it doesn't tell you how big to make your buttonholes. So I did it over four stitches. Again, it's a free pattern. I'm not giving anything away by saying it. And the only reason I did it that way is because of finding buttons. I'm like, I can always do buttonhole surgery on it and make it smaller. If the buttons are too big. Well, I'm looking and we're looking and I found some neat, funky buttons that my grandma's like, you know, they, Nicole, it don't look with the yarn you're going to use. It won't look, because I even showed her the picture of it. She goes, Nicole, the, get buttons that are going to complement the color that you're using. She's like, I know you. I know you love fun, funky, out there, crazy, fun buttons. And you're not always all about matchy-matchy. She said, but in this case, using a turquoise, turquoise, you're using a turquoise yarn. She said, it's kind of like blue and turquoise together, she said. And she said, it's like a mixture of blue. She said, none of these are going well at all with them. So we would are looking and looking and looking and looking and looking. If you've ever been to Joanne's, you know they got a lot of buttons. Well, I happened to find these guys. And they are like a turquoise, turquoise blue, too. I thought these would be so cute and different to go with them. I only needed three, but they come two in a two to a package. And my grand, my nan is like, you know, hey, that's okay. One button breaks. You have an extra. I'm like, yeah, I never thought of that. Good thinking, Nana. So I got a total of four. I think they are super cute. Hopefully, if I show these to you again the next time, better colors. Uh, I thought that they were so cute that they were flowers. She said, you got a color that complements your sweater. She said, even if it's not, she said, even if it's like lighter or darker than your sweater, she said, the color is still in the color family and it will complement it. She said, and you got your funky little fun type button. She said, you don't get your normal button. She said, you got flowers, and I, I like flowers. She said, so that'll be cute. She said, I said, perfect. So I got those, and yeah, they were only two seventy five at Joann's, which I didn't think was bad because if you've ever shopped for buttons there, they can be kind of pricey on some of their buttons. All right, this is going to be the stash enhancement episode. I got in the mail yesterday. I'm in Mary Maxim's Knit Club of the Month, and I got my January Knit Club, and it's cabled hat and mittens using four skeins of Mary Maxim's Titan in bulky weight. It's a three-ply, and the color is Three nine one zero five 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 eight oh seven. I call it brown. They call it that long five 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 number. But here's what it looks like. And if you're wondering, it is. If you're wondering how much it costs and all, I highly recommend this. It comes with its own little project bag. Comes with its own little project bag. It's clear, but hey, I like it. They are so handy. Ross, honey, you had it spot on when you said you love these bags. Um, it is, this is with shipping now. Because shipping for me is like $7.99, I think. The Knit Club of the Month itself is $12.99. But when you first sign up to get it, it's like your first month is $9.99 a month. It, it, the first subscription is nine ninety nine and then it goes to twelve ninety nine a month and with like I think seven ninety five, seven ninety nine with shipping, it is twenty dollars and forty nine cents a month. I like the fact because it they send you all kinds of different yarns to try. So that's what it looks like. I think it is super cute. That's my first one. Next this is from Joanne. It comes four in a skein, but my other one fell out because this bag is open. It is the Mill End 
and it's 100% mixed fibers, yarn assortment. It's acrylic, polyester, nylon, and wool. Machine washable. It's 14 ounces. I can wash and dry it. And it was made in Turkey. It is... I'm dropping the bag. Don't drop the bag, Nicole. That would not be nice. Um, it is in... This colorway, as I am making a mess out of it, because I am. It is like in red and gray. Almost reminds me of Bama colors, Alabama colors. It is cute. I do not know what I'm going to make out of it. I have this bag plus another bag I bought. And I'm not going to show you because it's the same. And then I got on sale. That was it. AC Moore, I mean not AC Moore, but Joanne, and then I went to AC Moore, and I was looking around, and I guess I was looking for sock yarn, I was bummed out, I didn't find anything, however, they have the Karin United on sale, are they, dis is Karin discontinuing their United line, or are they just coming out with new colors, does anybody know? Well, anyhow, I got four skeins of dark heather gray, and it is four ounces, approximately 235 yards. That's what that looks like. This is showing up true to color. It is pretty, and it is so soft. I would actually like to pick up two more skeins to have six, possibly make a sweater out of it, or a shawl. Four of those. That's in that bag. And then yesterday when I was out, I went to um, Tuesday mornings. And if you don't know what Tuesday mornings is, it's kind of like an Ollie's and Big Lots. It's kind of like a closeout discount store it's one of those places if you don't buy it when you're there you may not see it when you go back now back in December a lot of podcasters were saying they went to Tuesday mornings and got the Chagu knitting needles and they got the red lace well when I went the only ones that were left were the smaller sizes with the clear cables and I got 32-inch U.S. 000 1.5 mil needles, and I paid $249 compared to a normal $5. These will obviously be sock yarns. I was hoping when I was there that I'd find another one so that when I make socks, I could use both of them at the same time, but I only found one. When I was looking through the stack, I found 24 inch triple zeros 1.5 mil and they were 249 so I found them in a smaller cable but I can still use them to try making socks on I'm gonna do like some people do when they make socks like they cast on two at a time and they're able to work it in the round on the two needles and plus, I don't have that many, like, if I want to have more than one pair of socks on at the needle, on the needles, I don't have that many small needles to do that. All right. And then while I was there, of course, they have yarn there. And if you don't grab it when you're there and you see it, you probably won't get it when you go back. Um, I did see <laughs> my Lion Brand Saki Sock Yarn. When I was there, but even though one one skein makes a pair of socks, I always like buying two of the same. I always like having two skeins of the same color, just cause. Anyways, when I was there, I found Queen's Island. Oh, let me see if I can get the name of it. Out. 
I probably won't. It's something Queen's Island Collection in Lama, Lama Lace. All that says on here is it made it made in Peru for knitting forever ink. There are no dye lots. We recommend buying enough yarn at one time to complete an individual project. Knit with two hanks in assorted rows, two through four. This will assure overall blendage effect. It's 1.76 ounces, 50 grams, 209 yards. And they recommend U.S. two through six, 2.75 to 4.0 mils, 100% 100 llama. L, here's the ball band. It doesn't say what it's compared at, but here's the information. I'm going to put it and add it on my raft page. But here's the two colors. They are exactly alike. And I think they are gorgeous. I think they're pretty. I wish they would have had two more. Like this, because I would have bought four. They were $5.99 a piece. I didn't think that was too bad. I don't know what they actually retail for. And then when I was there, I like some of the some of their lotions and I happened to get one and I smelled it. It's by San Francisco soap company called Sea Breeze Cotton Hand and Body Cream. Compared at ten dollars and I got it for four ninety nine. So yeah. And this time of the year I can never have too much lotion. I do want to try and a lot of you have used it, Wolf Farms. I do want to try them. But as I said, I can never have too much lotion. I go through it like crazy this time of the year. So Wolf Farms is next on my list to try. Next. All right. This has been in my stash for a while. I won this on from Ken from the Turbo Knitters last year or the year before. Sorry. But I got four little, no, three five buttons and they all look alike they are beautiful i absolutely love them this is what they look like i want to find a project to wear them on so probably a sweater so if you know like a fun little sweater project maybe that you think would look cute send me a pm or a comment and let me know because i think these are positively adore i love them they live in my button collection, but I keep them in this bag so that I do not lose them. And, yes, I love the bag. It's a zebra print. All right, next. Let's see. I don't have anything here. No, that's just from a project. All right, when I was at um, AC Moore... Last weekend and this weekend, I have a total of four, but I'm already using one of them. I got these little things by Susan Bates, and I don't know what it's a replacement for, but it's a, and I, I love these little crochet hooks. They're a lifesaver when you're knitting, and I love this one. Ken and Talia both conv <laughs> convinced me that I should get these instead of just having a crochet hook with the end on it. It is a crochet hook on one side. And it has, like, a little knitting needle on the other. And they have said that it's great if you're cabling. And I am going to try that because I am working cable on a project. But absolutely adore. I have these three. I've been, every time I go, anytime I go to AC Moore now, or any place that sells Susan Bates, I am looking for these and stockpiling them because they are really a knitter's BFF. All right, when I was at AC Moore, I noticed they have a new yarn line. I don't know if it's exclusively for them, but it's called Studio. This says Studio Samples by Nicole. No, not by me. I wish it was by me, but it's not by me. I don't know the actual name of it, but this one, 75 acrylic, 25 polyester. It doesn't give a colorway but it was in their discounted dollar bin like where they have like the basic two and all 
like they have that bin where everything's dollars and the yarn's usually like thrown in and mixed up and out of proportion. Well, I saw this color and it's like a peach with like little tweed, like a tweed color. I guess, would you call it tweed color yarn? Looks like that. It has little specks of different colors in it. So I have six of these. I seen them and I seen there were six. So I spent six bucks and got six of them. I will find a cute little project. The yardage on them is 95 yards. So, doing some quick math, 95 yards times six skeins is 570 yards, which will give me a nice little fun project. I'm trying to make sure that everything is in this bag. Nope, there is one more thing. I knew I was missing something. And then when I was there, I did pick up some sock yarn. I picked up Patton's Cory socks, stripes in the meadow stripes because it spoke to me because I love color. 75% super, 75% washable wool and 25% nylon made in Turkey, packaged in Canada. And it says I can machine wash and dry it. But that's what it looks like. I got two skeins because I was afraid I won't be able to make a pair of socks with one. Even though it's approximately 166 yards. That's the colorway. I like the color and it is showing up good. And then when I was there, they had a sale on like their, in their jewelry making section. I seen some charm bracelets that were already made. And they were like 3 for $9.00. And I really liked them. I got little seahorse with something, with a little heart that says, made with love. And then most of you that know me know, like, I love the whole sun, moon, and stars theme. I didn't find a moon, but I found a cute little sun that says, a little charm on it says love. But I found that. I think it's cute. And then another one is, you guys know I like the whole India thing and all and everything else. I found another one and it says love and it has a hand with a third eye. And I absolutely, or a suspicious eye they call it, I absolutely love it. I think it's cute. And I got those. And that completes last weekend and this weekend's stash enhancement. Yeah. So that is everything. Oh, wait, no, that is not everything. I was at Ollie's yesterday. And I'm always looking for stuff to help me with nutrition-wise and to can you continue losing weight. And I, I don't normally go in for the whole Biggest Loser theme stuff like, Oh, this works because, you know, I, I just don't. But I did find one. It's called The Biggest Loser Simple Swaps, 100 Easy, cha 100 easy Changes to Start Living a Healthier Lifestyle. So I like that. I'm not going to review it here with you guys, but in a future podcast, I'm going to do a little book-related view on, view on it. <laughs> book-related review. But, like, I was looking at it. It, it says it retails for twenty one ninety nine, and I got it for three ninety nine. I was looking at some of this stuff, and it, it really, it really looks good, even on the back here. So I can't wait to go through and start reading it and finding some things and letting you guys know how it is. And then the last thing I got, because they had a whole selection of Biggest Loser books, cookbooks, um, around the world flavor cookbooks, but I didn't get those. I figured I'd try these two books first and see how I like it. I know Ollie's is another one of those places, if you go back, they may not have it, but, you know, I could probably get it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. But anyhow, this is, I know, and yeah, I know you're saying, Nicole, you'll pay the 20 some dollars, but oh well. This is called Biggest Loser Desserts Cookbook. More than 80 healthy treats that satisfy your sweet tooth without breaking your calorie budget. 
And again, this says it retails for $21.99 and I got it for $3. And they have some really, really good desserts on there. I would eat those. And I can also substitute the sugars for stevia for baking. And I will do a review on this as well. And let you guys know how I like it. And if it's actually worth paying retail price of $21.99. All right, that is everything. It is late here. I need to get supper going. And I need to edit this and upload it. So I will talk to you guys again next week, either next Friday or Saturday, either next Friday or Saturday or Sunday. And the reason I'm saying one of those three days is, sorry for the whole hand in the camera, um, is because of my work schedule. It may, I don't know how hectic it's going to be and if my Saturday is going to be hectic. So I will talk to you guys again next week. Until then. Be kind, be safe. If you're warm, please, if you're warm, please come up here and cool off. But if you're cold, please keep warm because it's bitter. Until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye.